So you want to travel to Nusa Penina. We can see why. It was voted one of the most beautiful islands to visit. We're Air and Lori and this is Plan Free. This is the channel that combines a geographically free travel lifestyle with sharing information with you on how to do it yourself. Once you have arrived to Bali, Indonesia, there are a few options to then travel to Nusa Penina. We chose to depart from Sanur Valley on a fast boat. There are a few different options on how to book this transportation. Option one is to book online. And like many things in Indonesia and the world over, booking online is the most convenient and the most expensive way to go about doing it. Here at Plan Free, we tend to try to make our money go a little bit further, so we rarely choose this option. Option number two, book through your accommodation, who will usually use an agent that speaks the local language and will book the fare on your behalf, oftentimes at a lower price than what you will see online. Another option is to book in person. There are many companies lined up in a row on Sanur Beach. You can walk from booth to booth talking to different companies until you settle on one that you're comfortable with at a price you feel is reasonable. Whichever option you book, be prepared to wade into the water briefly at the beginning and the end of the boat ride. Consider wearing water shoes. And you might want to leave your Instagram dress in your backpack until you arrive in Nusa Penida. The boat ride will be approximately 45 minutes. We had heard other videos talking about how windy and wavy the water was and uh, recommending to take seasick pills. We may have uh, been lucky. The day we went was fairly calm without waves and so there was no real bouncing or need to take pills. We chose to book with option number two through our accommodation using an agent. The price we paid was about 150k rupiah per person one way. It was in line with what we were seeing elsewhere. Through our experience, we can recommend booking a one-way fare only. There are many boat companies, not only on Sanur Beach, but on the other side, Nusa Penida as well. So it makes booking your return trip really simple when the time comes for you to come back to Bali. Our agent encouraged and pushed us to book our fares both to Nusa Penida and back to Bali at the same time. When it came time for us to return, both the boat company and our agent would not honor those return tickets. So in effect, they scanned us out of our return ticket and we had to pay for each of us uh, again on top of that in order to be able to return from your subpoena as well. We're not sure how common this scam is in this area but we can recommend through experience again to book a one-way fare. Once you've arrived at New Sapania the main tourist attractions that you may want to visit might include Kaling King Beach. This is the uh, rock formation that you may have seen. It's kind of iconic. Some people say it's in the shape of a T-Rex. It is a majestic spot. That's definitely worth visiting. Diamond Beach, another spot with fantastic vistas and viewpoints. It has a massive staircase built down to the beach from the cliffside, which is common here on New Spanita. Many of these beaches will have these staircases built down. And uh, speaking of, the stairs are all massive on this island. I don't know why, none of the Indonesians are all that huge. So the stairs were either built by giants, stairs here are massive. or four giants, or some combination in between. The stairs are huge everywhere. A two beach. A two beach allows you to walk down. It's a very flat beach, sheltered, uh, so the water is calm. You can swim and snorkel in, in this spot. Pretty comfortably good for families the tree house is an iconic spot for sunrise or sunset it has an excellent viewpoint it's a very good spot to get pictures or video clips memories of your trip here crystal bay is a popular spot to take in a sunset it has a nice flat beach again sheltered water where you can swim and snorkel teletubbies hills this is a spot that's on the top plateau of new Sapania. And it has these very unique round rolling hills that are sort of in layers. It's kind of an interesting landscape and a memorable spot to visit. Broken Beach and Angel's Billabong. Angel's Billabong, you may have seen, is sort of that uh, natural infinity pool. The second attraction in this spot is called Broken Beach, which is basically a cutout center uh, with a natural bridge walking over it. Typical two-day itineraries if you're visiting the island and you want to do two separate uh, day tours might include something like day one, visiting the Treehouse, Diamond Beach, and a Two Beach. Day two might look something like Kling King, and then Broken Beach, Angel Billabong, 
followed up with Teletubbies Hills and concluding with a relaxing time at Crystal Bay for sunset. Let's talk about transportation options on Nusa Penida. One of the most economical and maybe popular option would be a scooter. To rent a scooter for a day or by the hour. Some of the advantages to the scooter would be that they are nimble and that you can move in and out of traffic with ease. They're also economical so the cost of fueling them is fairly inexpensive relatively speaking. And when you have a scooter at your disposal you can come and go as you choose from your accommodations to locations to restaurants whatever you might want to do. Some of the disadvantages of scooters on this island particularly is that the roads are brutal. Even if you're an experienced scooter and or motorcycle driver, you'll constantly be contending with very narrow roads, frequent loose gravel, huge potholes, blind corners, drivers that are driving far too fast around these blind corners, usually in the middle of the road. If you want to be exhausted from driving on your holiday getaway to Nusa Penida, this is a good way to do it. There were very few tourists when we visited this island, uh, but still, when we caught the boat off of New Sapnia back to Bali, there were approximately 30 people on it, and five or six of those people had nice, fresh road rash that they were sporting from their recent scooter adventures here. That's going to be a no thank you for me. I still have scars from choosing this option in Honduras, and I'll pass. In my opinion, it's not worth the savings, but you guys make choices for yourself. Option number two would be taxi. We found this option to be very expensive here as the system is unregulated, meaning there is no system. And I think the drivers were fairly used to tourist dollars flowing consistently at the time we were there. So drivers would just make up a price and often it was pretty high. If you're a good negotiator and you have some idea of what your journey is worth in a taxi, this could be a legitimate option for you. The third option is to hire a driver for the day. When we visited, the going rate for a full day driver was $45 to $55 for the day. We chose this option to visit all of the destinations on the island that we were interested in. We overpaid the driver because he assured he was gonna go the extra mile for us on his tours. We found out later that most drivers say the same thing. So we ended up paying him $60 a day. If we were to visit here again, we would take the time to identify and hire a driver with a 4x4. Many of the places that we requested we wanted to visit or that we're interested in going to, our driver told us either his car wouldn't make it in there because of the clearance or that the roads were not suitable for his car. Accommodations. Like many places in this region, you can book accommodations that vary. Anywhere from hostels or one room to basic villas to plush five-star full-service resorts with varying price points to match. Again, we at Plan Free have a mind on economics, so we ended up choosing a villa on the basic side. We just thought, and rightly so, that we would be spending most of our days out exploring these uh, destinations that New Spina has to offer and that we would spend very little time in our accommodations. Basically, we just needed a place to sleep and have a shower. And for several of the days that we were there, we would depart on our day tour before sun up, so it would be dark out. We would run around all day until after dark. We would basically return to our villa, have a bite to eat, a shower, and crash. We'd do it all again the next day. I think we paid around 18 Canadian a night. Yep. And the bed, the shower, the internet was adequate. We found the people here to be generally pleasant, kind, and friendly. It is important to note that the people here are generally laid back and relaxed, and they will usually have a significantly different outlook and attitude than what you might be used to in westernized countries. We generally found the people to be likable. However, you may find some challenges if you show up to Nusa Penida and you have expectations for them to behave similarly to what you're used to in your own country. Example number one, we arranged for a ride into the town nearest our uh, bungalow hotel to get some water and some groceries and our driver forgot about that so that didn't happen. We had to arrange another driver uh, short notice. Second thing we arranged was to have a breakfast which the bungalow says they include in their service. They have a menu so we ordered it. We agreed that we were leaving at a certain time and that it would be ready for us. And we get up in the morning and go to the spot where we had arranged to have the breakfast uh, left for us. You guessed it, nothing there. 
And then we had our tour arranged for a certain pickup time in the AM, and that time came and went. Uh, after messaging the driver and getting no response, we phoned, called the driver, and clearly woke him up. We, uh, he assured us that he was coming, but he was totally asleep. So here we are, uh, 15 minutes past the arranged time, and we are yet to see if he will show up. Seems like the tourist dollars have been coming in pretty easy on Nusa Penina for a little while. I'm sure by now you're noticing a theme in uh, behavior, and we just want to encourage you to adjust your expectations when you arrive to Nusa Penina. All right, available food, markets, restaurants. The opportunity to get food here is generally pretty available, even if the food is mostly functional. They have a variety of warongs, corner markets, traditional markets, convenience stores, restaurants, bars. If you've never traveled to this region of the world before, the amount of garbage and plastic that you'll see on the island and in the ocean may be a little off-putting. If you have traveled here before or to similar regions, you may be more used to the amount of garbage, unfortunately. You may consider bringing along a bag that you can fill with garbage and debris as you go along your way, if you'd like to be part of the solution. Nusa Penina, like most other places in this region, shows a tendency to overdevelop in the name of profiting from tourist dollars. We're not judging, just observing. You are likely to see many posing platforms and structures, weaved baskets and hearts, giant swings, basically crammed into every available spot, often ruining once majestic viewpoints and landscapes. And we're saying that because we didn't see just one or two or three, they were everywhere. Having said all this, Nusa Penita is still a majestic beauty. And we did sit in a basket. And most people visit here for the landscapes, the beaches, the diving and snorkeling. Mm -hmm. Because it has all of these things on a world-class level, the positives still outweigh the negatives. There's not too many negatives, it's very beautiful. We're just sharing our experience. We can definitely recommend traveling here and we would look forward to another opportunity to visit. Yeah. If you like what we're talking about here and you want to support the channel for free, click the subscribe button. It just takes a second. Also, it's very helpful if you click the like button and add a comment to the video. The way YouTube runs its algorithm, it helps a lot. And we thank you for doing that. My name's Eric. I'm Lori. And this has been Plan Free. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now. <laughs>